It's nine o'clock mountain time and it's time for another video by Tom and Shane on uh, small business. And we're happy to have you along here with us. Tom Eagle Hop, your morning mayor in Bozeman, Montana. Shane and Tobin, half man, half amazing. Even though you can hardly see him, uh, he's still there. <laughs> so he's I'm a here. Little, yeah. He's a little dark this morning. Uh, today we want to talk about uh, employees and employers. And it, uh, and should be the word. It should be uh, employees and employer. It should not be employer versus employees. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the relationship between employers and employees. And yes, by all means, your employers hate you. They do. <laughs> Trust me on this. I, I've been there. I know. Shane has too. So. So, yeah, Shane, you were an employer. Uh, people hate you. No, <laughs> of course they did. No, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't tell you. They just didn't no. tell you they hated you. <laughs> no, quite to the contrary. Um, the people that worked for me were, were quite content. They were paid well. And mm -hmm. I always made it sure of that I, I knew what their, uh, <clears throat> their basic living costs were. And mm -hmm. I told them that that was important for me to know. So that, that I, made certain they had a managed lifestyle at least they got uh, more than two weeks holiday paid for and uh, very often one holiday was away um, where they would fly somewhere and then the other two week holiday was normally with family or, or at home and uh, when when they traveled they always traveled business or first class and stayed I you know paid for them to stay in nice hotels so to, no they, my, my employees were quite happy the work they did was what they wanted. I, I didn't hire people to do work they didn't want to do. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And um, but sometimes employers get the feeling that it's, uh, in, you know, that it's their way or the highway. And let me give you a, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that you're a, a business owner and you say, wow, I can see you. <laughs> let's say you're a business owner and um you you uh your uh, uh daughter's friend has a wedding you know mm -hmm. so you come to your employee and say hey i've got to go to this wedding uh you're going to have to work that day no that doesn't work folks um the employee is not your slave you can't impose you know you're going to work or you'll be fired uh that doesn't work you're going to have to make other accommodations for yourself um, unless that employee wants to work, you can give them the option. Uh, you can pay them extra. And if they want to do it, great. But if they don't, then uh, absolutely um, you, you, um, you can't impose on them uh, what you want to do. Uh, they are there. They're not there to work for you. They're there to work toward their own personal goals and ambitions. They're not there for you. They're yeah. there for themselves. And and I found in um, four of the five different businesses that I worked in over my life that people were there to assist me. They didn't weren't there to work for me. They were to help. Yeah. Them. They were help. They were there to to help me have more time. And uh, you know, I always made sure that um, we've talked about this before. You, you know, you have to trust people, and you you know you have to delegate. Um, otherwise, you can't develop or grow in, as a business. But uh, mm -hmm. employees, generally, all employees, whatever business you look at, they have three things in common. The first one is money, of course. And the next one is hours, like as in how many hours. Um, you know, I was in a business in, in the second half of my life that was 24-7. You know, it's just 24 hours a day. And unfortunately, so I had to expect that of the assistance that I got from other people or the work that people did for me. Um, the, the third thing was commute. You know, how far do they have to commute to go to work? So those are really the three big things that, that you know, employees think about with regards to a job. Yeah. Uh, you know, time management we've talked about is so cute, key. key. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me to your lifestyle. So commuting is, is a major key to that. You know, if you spend an hour, more than an hour commuting to work every day, like a half an hour there, half an hour back, if, if it's an hour there, or, that's two hours of your day. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting up in the double digits, you know, over 10% of your day 
is you know driving to and from work that's not that's not good yeah i i did that too i i've driven an hour to work and back uh, in fact even further than that and uh, you're right and particularly when you're sitting in uh, traffic going home and you're going at two miles an hour you know what would normally be a 10 minute trip is now a hour and a half trip that's right so and, it's you know, that's yeah. key to it as, as you say uh, i mean in vancouver you know today uh rush hour in the evening starts at 3 30 and it goes to uh to 6 30. it's mm -hmm. three hours long yeah and it doesn't really soften off till after seven mm -hmm. at night and you know rush hour in the morning is 7 30 to 9 30 and it sharpens off pretty much at nine o'clock. People are there, but that that was before COVID. Yeah. Uh, now the there's you know there was you know. <laughs> yeah, there's no traffic at all now. So. Oh no, that we it's incredible. We, <laughs> <Do you? laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. Here in Bozeman, we have a rush fifteen minutes, not a rush hour, so it's uh, pretty good here. So yeah, you aren't tied up in traffic <laughs> here very much. So, well. Another thing you've got to consider is, there, you know, and, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about working conditions and employee uh, employer relationships. So um, the next thing we want to consider is the hours the employee is not working. Uh, so there's 168 hours in a week and uh, your employees uh, work 40 hours or less and they sleep 40 hours or less, probably less. They they probably work anywhere from 33 to 40 hours under the IRS for full time. But they are theoretically out of your business 88 hours a week, 88 hours a week. And what you need to think about is how are they talking about your business when they are outside your four walls? So that's the point. And if they're unhappy, uh, they will tell somebody and uh, that person may tell someone else. But I can almost guarantee you that as that story makes its way from person to person, it's going to be embellished. It's going to sound worse. It's going to be um, it's going to be made more interesting. And that's the that's the problem is that we employers really need to concentrate on creating an environment that employees want to work in. They want to be there. Their, their goals and their dreams are being met and uh, life is good. They can go home, um, not worry about work, not worry about being beat up or vilified by the boss or whatever. So that's what we're trying to create here. And we're trying to alert employees to this is to that's how you have to run a successful business. Otherwise, you're going to have turnover all over the place. Well, that's true. And then there are principally two types of workers. There's the physical or trade worker. And of course they, there's the office worker, you know, the office worker gets up and showers in the morning and goes to work and comes home. And you know, the trade, the trade or, or a physical worker gets up in the morning, goes to work and comes home showers and then enjoys the rest of the day. You're right. I mean, with 42 hours left in the day, for you to manage everything else in your life, your, your personal life and your social and academic life, you know, it's uh, it's very difficult for people to, to find the time, depending on what the kind of a home life they have, for, you know, whether they're single or, or married or with children. But the, at the end of the day, the, the dominating fact is, are they happy with the work they do? If, they, if it's a trade, if they're working in a warehouse or they're working in a store environment uh, stocking or selling you know it's a it's a total different environment than working in an office and doing paperwork um, paperwork and and the time you do in, or spend in an office is valued in a totally different way than if you work in a, a brick and mortar environment and so you, there are two sides to the story um, mm -hmm. there are some similarities in dealing with them but uh, as i always say compliment in public and criticize in private to keep things in either situation in order like you got to keep you know you got to command order no matter what work environment you have that's true yeah they're yeah uh, uh people are hired to uh, you know maintain certain standard of work and to a uh, certain number of hours and everything we all agree to that when we sign up to uh, start work with someone uh, the employer says, here's what I'm going to do. The employee says, here's what I'm going to do. 
and uh, everything works out uh, great for both sides as long as everybody does what they're supposed to do. But creating a win-win environment is creating a situation where you have a team rather than an employee-employer uh, relationship. Uh, every, every athletic team has a captain, but that captain may not be the best player, may not be the most uh, important person on that team, but that's the person that people look to for decision-making and what are we going to do, how are we going to uh, make this happen. And it's the same with your, with your environment uh, that you create in your business. You're, as a business owner, you want to create an environment where customers uh, or where um, employees are co comfortable speaking with you, that telling you that something might, we might change this or we might do, uh, do something another way. And well, that's, that's the win-win right. environment. That's right. And, and a great example of the, of one extreme to the other was Ford and, and hit building cars um, back in the, tw in the tw tw 20s. And when the, the dial turned and, and an industrial uh, integration of a new society it, it fell into play, he, you know, he went out and he hired other employees from other companies in the same business by paying him more. Didn't like it. And, you know, he would do more for his employees because he wanted them to work. And he'd created a whole system where people could end up becoming bored because they did literally the same thing for eight hours a day. And then uh, what happened was the issue of unions came along out of Montana. And um, people started looking at this as a great opportunity because business, um, as Tom has pointed out, is, is decided by um people that are in charge and their uh, you know executive management was basically created back at the beginning of the last century the 20th century with administrative uh, structure and so that uh, the people at the top weren't really involved with the employees and they had others basically telling them or instructing them what to do or showing them what to do and that created problems which will ultimately oh, oh, you know oh, literally over a decade resulted in the the employee wanting to be unionized, to have someone represent them to the administrator at the top of his staff. So long story short, you know, you, you want, as you say, uh, to create a win-win environment and you have to work within the means that you have and try and keep um, order in that. Um, Alabama is, you know, having a big issue this week. Um, People working there for uh, the great Amazon are going to decide uh, in a work-free state if they want to have a union. And uh, it's amazing to realize that here we are back again after the 90s and the turn of the century with unions showing that kind of, 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 of uh, opportunity to grow again. And uh, why be surprised? We saw it 100 years ago in a, a new the industrial age and you know, we're, we're seeing it today in, in AI, in the AI revolution that's going to occur. So it's a natural process and uh, managers and administrators of business have to learn to work with it. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the next thing we need to talk about is uh, employee evaluations. And um, I've given them, I've had them given to me. And <laughs> generally there's one there's one caveat in uh, employee evaluation, and that is, but is the great eraser. Uh, for example, you would tell an employee, hey, you do A, B, C, great, but D needs work. And but will simply erase A, B, C, and the employee, uh, the employee is now sitting there uh, thinking that they're, all of the good they've done is canceled out by the butt uh, because D is the is in the forefront of the employer's mind. And when you're giving an evaluation, in many cases, they are to, uh, they're, well, I don't know. I, I guess if you, if you have a favorite employee, you're going to give them a glowing evaluation. But if you've got an employee in the middle or the lower, uh, it's going to be a blame game. And you need to correct that. You need to, as Shane pointed out, the uh, uh, one of my uh, employers uh, once told me 
uh, you give two warm fuzzies for every cold prickly. So <laughs> you, uh, as I've said before, you need to publicly find something that this, that every employee in your organization has done every six months and publicly, um, uh, you know, let let the other workers know that this person did this, no matter how minor it might be. But they need to be they need to be shown that they're appreciated, and the um, the evaluation is one way rather than build people up. You can bring them down. Absolutely, recognition is a key premise for people that are free and deciding the type of work and or where they all work. Because they're they're the ones making the first decision by walking through your door, uh, it, it's a it's a rather interesting aspect of of work, um, where where there's a precursor to the work they're going to do by training or education. It, coming to that job is is different in that case. They know what they're going to do. It's something they enjoy. It's something they've trained or been educated to do. But if you're walking into a trade issue of, of work where you'll learn the trade you'll learn you know how to work the line so to speak as as most employees call it you know the assembly line then then it's a different situation be but the the monotony of it becomes regular because it's the same thing every day and as we've talked in the past the, the great thing is recognizing the 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 work put out or the effort put out by staff and and uh, celebrating it you know, depending on how big your company is and how many people you employ, of course, but nothing wrong with uh, if you have a small company to, to have a company picnic or, you know, to have a Friday uh, afternoon where you surprise everyone with pizza or even, you know, take the, your staff out uh, for a meal with family. You know, it, it, it's a great it's a great reality that to, to feel wanted. And that's one of the things you want your employee to have is that need is filled of being wanted because we're all human. That's one of our greatest emotions. Absolutely right. Hey, guess what? Uh, YouTube will pay you to make videos. I don't know if you knew that or not. We use StreamYard to do these videos that you're watching right now. And the link to that is in the description below. And uh, they have a free version. And also, if you like the tips that we're giving you, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, that doesn't cost anything. Ringing the notification bell doesn't cost anything, and you'll be notified whenever we're on. And like us, because YouTube likes that kind of stuff. And if you'd like to support the channel, uh, we are also on Patreon, and the link to that is in the description below as well. And also, uh, dealing with employees, we made a similar video sometime back, Shane, uh, called How to Motivate You and Your Employees. And that, uh, I'll put a link to the description uh, to that in the uh, uh, below as well in the description. But uh, that one gets more into the things, uh, the types of leadership there are. So if, you, if you're not sure what type of boss you are, uh, check out that um, uh, particular uh, episode and uh, you can identify uh, which one you are. So. Next, we've got to go to uh, placing blame versus training. And uh, this is really important. Um, uh, I work for a company where every month we would sit down and the employer would bring in the numbers of what we made, what we lost, things like that for all of the employees to understand. Um, and if we lost money, there was a uh, maybe we did a job incorrectly or didn't do it on time or uh, somehow uh, it, it wasn't done properly and the company lost money because of it. And the object wasn't to place blame on whose fault it was and, you know, whatever. Uh, it was to, can we prevent this mistake from happening again? And what would the procedure be to stop that? And the employees would have input as to ways to correct the company. And this is this is the difference between placing blame and training. And I'm sure you did the same thing, Shane. If you know if somebody uh, screwed up a, a 48 ounce porterhouse, uh, <laughs> you don't you don't slap them down. <laughs> you know you say, hey, how can 48 ounce porterhouse is pretty expensive? How can we how can we make this not happen again? 
Oh, well, the answer to that specific question is very simple. Always undercook your steak. Don't overcook it. I mean, it's better to cook it more because you can. We may have dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we may have dropped it on the way to the table. Oh, look, the, the, the point is, is that uh, mistakes are made. Um, that's a human reality. Um, so one of the, the key situations in this is how you modify this to make it equal for everyone. Um, if it's a large company that you own with more than, say, 50 or, or you know, 100 employees, the, the likelihood of you dealing directly with all the employees is very small. So you have to have uh, the proper paradigm for them to follow the the protocol, as they say in, in the legal community. You have to have a protocol, which means there are guidelines that are followed by everybody. Um, rules aren't meant to control people. Rules are meant to manage them. Rule in, in in whether it be government or business, you know, it's about managing people and their ability to do, um, you know, difficult things or you know follow instructions. So we, we all know from COVID now how you know the protocol of a government can shift and change and control you faster than you thought. Then you look at your employees, you know, your, your your employer during COVID, and you go, gee. They, they relaxed and gave me the benefits so I could work more. So, you know, there's two different styles to this. And uh, in, as you say, it's it's not about necessarily just pointing out the errors, but solving the problem. So it doesn't happen again. You, you don't want it to happen again. Neither well, sure. Do. Yeah. No, no, you don't. Uh, but, um, you know, if, it, if it's an honest mistake, then that employee feels bad uh, already. You don't need to you don't need to pile on. And the vast majority um, are honest mistakes. Yeah, and they are. That's very true. Yeah, that somebody just did the wrong thing at the wrong time, and maybe they were rushed or in a hurry, or maybe there was a deadline. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But the point is, um, you know, use it as training, not as uh, not as vilification or bashing someone. Uh, or abuse. You know, yeah, or yeah. whatever. So, it's yeah. Yeah. All right. so anyway, some final thoughts we want to we want to cover here is. Um, you know, yeah. They, look, I just want to throw this in. Don't sure. don't Cuomo your employees. Okay, not a good thing. Yeah, no, <laughs> not good. <laughs> no, don't be doing that. No. Yeah. So the the real point we want to make here uh, in this video today is that uh, it's um it's important that you create a team, uh, a group that work together. Uh, they, each employee is dependent on the other one. You know, one employee takes the order at the, at the uh, desk maybe, and it passes it on to someone else and someone else works on it and they give it to someone else. So it's gotta be a team effort. Everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody's gotta be competent in the other employees around them and the, and the owner or the manager, whichever one you happen to be needs to be able to deal with those people in in a variety of ways the other thing that comes up is that you may have a group of people who are a couple of them might be in their 20s a couple of them might be in their 50s so handling people in different ways based on their experiences and their ages and things like that and the way you direct them and talk to them is another thing that you desperately need to uh, learn uh, in order for your business to be successful right. and for the team to work together. That's right. I mean, nobody likes to be ordered what to do. Yeah. So you need to ask or you need to instruct someone what to do. And that covers every employee in every job situation that people have. Uh, you know, do not, you can't order people around. It's not, it's not productive. Um, it causes, um, uh, you know, it causes all kinds of problems. And, and uh, you know, the personal in, individual problems for the employee, they, they, they feel, uh, you know, deferred, misdirected or mistreated. So I always ask, I always instruct, uh, exp explain everything so that people understand how it's something, how important something is. When, well, again, if you're doing a trade, like if you work in a kitchen or something and, and you're being taught to produce, some, you know, something, what, you know, whether it's a baking good. Um, or, or a salad or, or how to cook on a line. You know, th mm -hmm. these things are, are skills that you have to be taught. 
And again, you need to be instructed to, for you to learn them. And you need to know that the people that are teaching you have the qualifications to, uh, <laughs> to, to, turn, to turn that information over to you. So respect has a lot to do with it too. So th these are the things that we want to talk about as we go through these recommendations and these talks with you uh, so you can enhance and improve your business, which brings in the money. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Hey, don't forget, we're on radio every Saturday. You can listen to us anywhere in the world, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Uh, click listen now at KMMSAM.com. And uh, you can also watch any of our previous uh, videos and audio uh, uh, radio shows at uh, KMMSAM.com. Also, just click on Tom and Shane's podcast. And, uh, well, Shane, uh, any final thoughts uh, on? Well, everybody have a good day and, uh, you know, be, be happy that you have an opportunity to pursue because that's why you're watching us. And secondly, live to work. Work for that's work right. yourself. You're living to work. And it's, it's an important thing because you get up every day and you actually feel better, even walking to work if you don't drive. That's right. Also, a uh, reminder, we'll put the, uh, we'll put the uh, other uh, uh, video we did relating to employees and employers down in the, uh, uh, in the description below. So check that out. And uh, we'll see everybody back here Thursday at 10 a.m. Bye for now.